Football from Yard, the People's Channel. Big up football from the yard crew, just a short update on the reggae youths. Jamaica's under 20 team had a one all draw with Costa Rica in their opening match of the CONCACAF under 20 tournament. The young reggae boys left it till late with striker Jamari Clark converting a 98th minute penalty. The point places Jamaica joint second place after host nation Honduras defeated Antigua and Barbuda by a 3 0 margin in their opening game. The under 20 coach Marcel Fuzzigale carried a squad to Honduras that was a mix of European, US, and Jamaican based players. The starting lineup included highly rated goalkeeper Kanaya Boyce Clark. Boyce Clark is on the books of English club Reading. The central defensive unit included Chelsea youth player Luke Badley Morgan and diminutive Jamaica College player Romain Blake. Blake is a utility player who often plays in midfield but is also able to play in defence. Lamont Rochester from Cavalier and Tariq Zimenez from Mount Pleasant were at left back and right back respectively. The central midfield trio had a heavy schoolboy football influence, with Clarendon College holding midfielder Malachi Douglas joining Kingston College midfielder Christopher Pearson and Jamaica College midfielder Duncan McKenzie. Wolverhampton Wolves winger Tyler Roberts was on the right flank and Mount Pleasant player Devante Campbell on the left. Zion Scarlett, who recently signed a contract with Columbus Crews, third division affiliate, led the forward line. Jamaica started on the front foot for the first 15 minutes of the game, maintaining the majority of possession, pressuring the Costa Rican defensive line, and getting off a few dangerous shots through Duncan McKenzie. Like their senior team, Costa Rica gets numbers behind the ball quickly, and they fall early and often to disrupt attacks. As a result, the Jamaican wingers Tyler Roberts and Devante Campbell found it difficult to get into the rhythm of the game despite looking dangerous in spurts. Once the Costa Rican team settled, after about 20 minutes in, they started to take over the game. Jewison Bennett and Brandon Aguilera, members of the full Costa Rican national team that just qualified for the World Cup, lived on Jamaica's left side and played at a level above everyone else on the field. The other issue for Jamaica was the centre of the park, where Jamaica's midfield was lacking a bit of grit and the pace of play was a bit too pedestrian. At halftime, Coach Gale removed Malachi Douglas, bringing on Kobe Thomas and shifting Christopher Pearson to a deeper midfield role. Though Thomas and Duncan McKenzie had some dangerous spurts of play, Costa Rica remained a notch above in the middle of the park. Jamaican teams in general do a poor job of contesting crosses and set pieces, and Dorian Rodriguez was able to take advantage of that, converting a cross in the box after being left unmarked. Despite being down a goal, the Jamaican youngsters continued to fight and received a boost when Chad James entered the field and provided a direct threat from the right flank. James, who has been affiliated with academies in Spain, got a dangerous shot on goal and was able to generate a penalty, which Mackenzie was unable to convert in the 73rd minute. Jamaica had one more chance. After Jamari Clark was fouled in the box, Clark himself took the penalty and made no mistake from the spot. The hard fighting but inconsistent performance wasn't much of a surprise, particularly in light of the lack of high quality preparation afforded to the youngsters heading into the tournament and the fact that the majority of team members have had minimal exposure to adult football at their local or professional clubs. Next up will be Honduras on June 20th. It was hard to evaluate the Honduran team since the second half of their opening game was a waterlogged encounter. The good thing about this tournament format is that three teams from the group qualify for the next round and Jamaica has a great chance to qualify even if the results against Honduras don't go their way. With that said, Jamaica will need a bit more urgency in central midfield and a different combination will likely be required than the one we observed against Costa Rica. Coach Gale overweighted his squad with finesse central midfielders, but there are a few options that can provide a different style of play. 16-year-old Romain Blake often plays in defensive midfield and plays with a bit more bite, but the coach may prefer to keep his central defensive pairing intact and not move him into the midfield. Alexander Bicknell is also available. He's a player who keeps it simple, passes quickly, and doesn't dwell on the ball very long. It is yet to be seen how you would cope on the defensive end at this level of play. Striker Jamari Clark is built like a big man, and his power is a cut above the other attacking options, so I'd expect him to feature more heavily in future games. Yeah, more important than the results in this tournament is being able to identify special talents who should be fast-tracked into the senior team. Goalkeeper Kanaya Boyce Clark looks to be one such player. It's only one game, but he does display the ability and type of leadership that suggests he should be in the senior squad immediately. With more appearances, weaknesses in his game may become more apparent, but at the moment, he seems to be the special talent among the group. 
as the group prepares for the next game against Honduras, hopefully they'll have a good time to recover. Devante Campbell had to be substituted due to injury, so hopefully it's a minor one and he's able to continue for the rest of the tournament. Beating a host nation is never easy to do, but the young reggae boys can certainly accomplish that goal if they maintain the focus and keep the unity. Respect once more for listening. Linkage next time.